As we move on to the next part of the conference, I have to regret that Sandra Kalnieta, member of the European Parliament, chair of the Reconciliation and European Histories group in the European Parliament, who was meant to be here and welcome us in this conference, was not able to come due to very trivial reasons in Belgium. There's a strike and flights are cancelled. She was able to send her welcome address by a on a video. I'm happy that modern equipment and technology allows us doing that. Let us hear her presentation and we will continue our conference. As far as I see, it, the people who need interpretation have headphones on their heads. If you still have problems, please raise your hands. The organizers of the conference will help you, and the staff of the, conference of the CMS will help you if you have any problems. Dear participants of the conference United Europe, United History, Europe today has been reunited politically. It is whole and free. However, we Europeans must realize that equal, if not greater, political will and determination will be needed to overcome the consequences which the Iron Curtain has left in the consciousness of two generations of Europeans. Both parts of Europe that were once divided by the Iron Curtain must be able to speak in one language about values that unite us, values that help us understand each other, and values that we consider to be of the utmost importance. Currently, far too often, we Europeans still find ourselves unable to understand each other. Until the unification began, Europeans had no confusion about their continent's post-war history. To put, it, to put it in simplified terms, there were two pillars to this understanding. One was World War II, in which the winners were the good guys and the losers were the bad guys. The other was the grand project of Franco-German reconciliation, which can be described as the construction of the common European home. The true history of the Iron Curtain shakes up the truth which lie behind these two pillars. That is because 1945 did not bring liberty for Eastern Europe and the Baltic States. For the countries of Eastern Europe, it was the beginning of a new period of captivity, when the totalitarian Nazi regime was replaced by the equally totalitarian Soviet regime. Europe built its common home without us because the victorious allies sacrificed the freedom of Eastern Europe and the Baltic States to the Soviet Union at the end of the World War II. The authorized version of post-war history in Europe contains virtually nothing about how these decisions by the allies affected the lives of millions of innocent people who were abandoned behind the Iron Curtain. Since the collapse of the Soviet Union, these facts have been more or less known in the academic environment, yet they have not sunk into the Western consciousness. Today, every Western European student knows that Nazism is evil. That is because there was hard work committed to denazification in the period after the war. A political, legal and social framework was created to prevent the emergence of new forms of totalitarian ideology in Europe. Now, it is important that Europeans have an equal level of understanding about the crimes of totalitarian communism. To attain true reconciliation, Europe must recognize all the historical aspects of modern Europe and, wo and work for a greater understanding Therefore, it is necessary for the EU 
to formulate a common approach to Nazism and totalitarian communism, to clearly define its attitude towards the crimes of totalitarian communism, to ensure the continuity of the comprehensive reassessment of political, historical and legal aspects of the crimes of totalitarian communism, to ensure a clear international legal framework for free access to archives which contain information about totalitarian crimes and to promote education, research, memorial, funding and pan-European cooperation on this subject. In conclusion, I would like to speak about Hannah Arendt's seminal study, The Origins of Totalitarianism. For Arendt, totalitarianism was a form of governance which eliminated the very possibility of political action, converting human beings into classes of people who are liquidated simply because they belong to a particular social or ethnic group. She warns us, Totalitarian solutions may well survive the fall of totalitarian regimes in the form of strong temptations which will come up whenever it seems impossible to alleviate political, social or economic misery in a manner worthy of man. Europeans must never be naive enough to think that this can never happen again. And we have seen it. It happened in Srebrenica. We must all be aware of the fact that if it happened once, then it can happen again. That is why the knowledge of a history and the reconciliation of memories are indeed so very important. For this reason, an informal group of members of European Parliament called Reconciliation of European Histories has been established in the European Parliament. This group aspired to develop a common approach regarding crimes of totalitarian regimes in the earlier totalitarian communist regime. To ensure continuity of the process of evaluation of totalitarian crimes and equal treatment and non-discrimination of victims of all totalitarian regimes. To learn more about the work of this group, you can visit the group's website EU Reconciliation WordPress.com. While we may deal with subjects of the past, this work is crucial for Europe's future. I wish you ardent and fruitful discussions. It is our task to reconcile the historical narrative with the truth. Always remember that no generation has the right to stop its quest for the truth for reconciliation and repentance for the errors and crimes of the past. Dear participants of the conference,